Debbie and I are doing this um, segment together because um, a friend of Debbie's who grew up in the Rio Grande Valley uh, now lives in a very kind of chic area of Dallas that is Highland Park. And apparently a group called Dallas Justice Now, kind of a um, spinoff of Black Lives Matter, has been handing out flyers um, in Highland Park. Flyers kind of aimed at Democrats, aimed at liberals, and very illuminating what the flyers say. So Debbie's friend got one of them. Uh, she's not a Democrat, but she was, I think, mistaken for one. And Debbie's like, have you seen this? <laughs> and I could hardly believe it. Let me just, I'm just going to read a few lines and have Debbie sort of talk about this a little bit. We're writing to you because we understand you're white <laughs> and live within the Highland Park Independent School District. It is also our understanding that you are a Democrat and supporter of Black Lives Matter. So this is Black Lives Matter addressing fellow Democrats, asking them to do what? We are asking you to pledge that your children will not apply or attend any Ivy League school or U.S. News and World Report Top 50 school. If you don't have children under 18, we ask you to pledge to hold your white privileged friends, family, and neighbors with children to this standard. And then it says, having your children attend these schools takes away spaces from students of color who need the job opportunities, education, and influence that these schools provide. And then it goes on to say, you know, you wealthy whites, you've been putting Black Lives Matter hashtags and slogans. It's now time to sort of pay up. It's time to live up to your values and deny yourself and your children the opportunities that should not be turned over to persons of color. Uh, you know, honey, I, I have to say a little bit of me loves this because in some way they're holding the left to its own standard. You know, you say you're a beneficiary of white privilege. OK, give up your privilege. Why are you living in this beautiful house? Move out. So that's the, you know, this is obviously the, the opening salvo, but this is kind of what I said to a kid at Amherst years ago, calling him on his, calling him on his hypocrisy. In a sense, this is now becoming institutionalized on the left. Yeah, this is, this is really, really troubling. Um, it's, uh, you know, we talked about this being, having like four, four types of, of entitlement people, right? And so this is, this is just one of them. Uh, I, I said the first one, of course, is people that love welfare and they, you know, they keep having kids because they know they're going to get more money from the government. And so they don't want to work. They rather get it from the government. OK, that's the first. So hold on. So this is the, yeah. this would be the FDR entitlement scheme. The idea here is that the government owes me. I, I need to get certain benefits to which I'm entitled as a taxpayer. That's the most modest form of, you may say, extraction. Theft. Uh, well, I mean, it, but it <laughs> but is theft ratified to some degree exactly, by, by the exactly. democratic process. What's exactly. number two? Yeah. So it's uh, people that feel like stores and businesses owe them something and they can just go in and take whatever they want. Look at all of these videos of, of thieves going into these stores, just taking, you know, having these backpacks and going in there and just loading up and walking out there. The, the manager's like, Hey, hey, you know, the, the security and nothing. They well, just remember the, there was a video of a black lives matter uh, spokesman saying, Hey, listen, this looting, it's a form of reparations. Exactly. So in exactly. other words, don't so, crack down on it. Right, right. Let it be. Right. Because so they they're, feel, they're entitled. They feel entitled. They but, feel entitled. They don't feel like they're robbing anything or anyone. It's their stuff. You know, let them take it, right? So that's the second. Yep. Uh, the third, of course, is this. The guilt trip and intimidation tactic that they use in order to have their way. Okay, right? now pause. You're, you're talking about two different things. So guilt and intimidation. It's interesting how they go together. So guilt is the carrot. In other words, guilt appeals to your voluntary submission. Right. You recognize that what you're doing is wrong. You should feel guilty because of all the things you've done. You admit that you're a beneficiary of white privilege. So voluntarily relinquish what you have. But you're saying veiled behind that is, hey, if you don't, we can come loot your right, house. Right, right. I believe that this is that this letter that they had to sign either, yes, I agree, or I'm a racist. <laughs> Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. So so it's it's either or, right? And nobody wants to be called a racist or admit that they're something they're not. So And um, anyone anyone who thinks that they're not going to come and intimidate you at your home should remember the McCloskeys. Exactly. That's exactly what they did to them, right? Uh, they went in there and and they intimidated and look at who is paying the price. Not them, but rather the McCloskeys, right? So 
they're the ones that had to give up their weapons and, and all of that. So we have this escalating, so, you know, we have entitlements, we have looting, right? you know, where is this going? What, right. What's its end point? Okay, the end point is taking your stuff, your possessions, by force. And this is what I call the Venezuelan model. But the Venezuelan model started with all these others, okay? It didn't just happen that way. It was a progression, and it got to that. So let's talk about what happens in Venezuela. So in Venezuela today, um, we, we had you saying this in the movie Trump Card. You said, if you leave your house and go on vacation, you come to America to visit a relative, you go back, your house might find someone else living there. In other words, the government has literally assigned someone else to move into your house. To take your house, take your land, you name it. Not just that, but also Hugo Chavez went through this expropriation campaign where he expropriated businesses. And he would ask, who owns that? You know, he'd point to the business. And one of his, one of his staffers would say, a Jewish family, take it, expropriate it. And he'd just walk down the street and expropriate all the businesses because in his world, nobody owns anything except for the government. And and honestly, as you say all this, I mean, literally 10 years ago, people would have to um, say, wow, I mean, things yeah. are really horrible yeah. over there. But rest in the secure conviction that that can't happen in the United States. I think that phrase, that can't happen here is increasingly being eroded by things we do see happening. Right. You know, the First Amendment, we don't, free speech may be suppressed over there, but it's not going to happen over here. Well, it is happening over here. It is. In fact, it's here. It is here. It's here it now. It is here. And you know, Hugo Chavez's tactics actually gave way to entitle, to making criminals also feel entitled. As a matter of fact, now the, the government is cracking down on gangs criminal gangs that extort people uh, that, you know, they just go in and take things, take things from your house, you know, just like, like the thieves here in, in America go into Walmart or Target and take things. These criminals go into people's houses and do the same thing. And why? Because that mentality basically started with Hugo Chavez doing it himself and, then and being okay with the criminals doing it as well. Although at some point the socialist state, and this is maybe the final, this is almost stage five, where the socialist state doesn't want the competition of the gangs because the gangs are doing in a disorganized way what the socialist state arrogates to itself. We should have the right to take anybody's house, we, but, but not you randos out there doing it on your own behalf. So therefore, stop doing it. Let us do it because we're the official channel exactly. for robbing the citizens' <laughs> blood. Exactly, right? exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. So very eerie, very scary, and I think people need to just say, no. Yeah, this direct escalation, I think, represents a, a kind of a clue to where the left is really headed, the, the complete um, disrespect of private space, private property, uh, and earned benefits, which are now all ascribed to white privilege. And their point is, if you got it unfairly, if it's stolen goods, give it up, man.